Hey there, Careblazers. Welcome back to the place where we talk about everything dementia. Dr. Natalie here, and in today's video, it is the second ever rapid fire segment where I scroll through my YouTube comments and I start answering your questions right here on the screen. Before we get started, if you're new to Careblazers TV, welcome. We'd love to have you join the family. All you have to do is hit that red subscribe button on your screen. It is completely free. Also, I wanna make sure that everyone is aware that the second edition of the Care Blazer Survival Guide is now out. You can download your free copy in the description below if you wanna start improving your relationship with your loved one with dementia. All right, here we go. Donna has noticed that her father with dementia has started having a much shorter fuse. She says that he's losing his temper frequently and making pretty rude comments, that he used to be like this a lot in the past, but that he hasn't been like this for a really long time. She asks, can dementia bring out personality traits from long ago? Donna, yes. Oftentimes with dementia, whatever personality your loved one had before they got the disease, it is magnified when the disease starts to progress. So if your loved one was always rude or angry, the chances are high that your loved one's going to continue to be rude and angry and that those symptoms might even get a lot worse as the disease progresses. If your loved one was always a really nice sweetheart and very kind and gentle, chances are as the disease progresses, they will continue to be a sweetheart and kind and gentle and maybe even more so. Now this isn't true 100% of the time, like many things and symptoms with dementia, there's a lot of variation that can happen from person to person. However, frequently people's personality, however it was back in their youth, back in their young adult life, tends to be magnified when dementia starts to progress. So Lauren asks, how do you tell the difference between dementia and intellectual disabilities such as Down syndrome? How do you tell them apart? Great question. For intellectual disabilities, those start in childhood. So the person never really had normal thinking abilities. They started out, their brain never really got to the point with their other peers. So they started out from a young age having problems learning new information. With dementia, somebody with dementia can go their whole life functioning really well doing well in school, keeping up with their peers, doing well at work, and it's only as the years go on and they get older that the uh, problems with thinking and memory and attention start to happen. So it's really about when the problem started. And intellectual disabilities, they've always been there from a young age, and with dementia, the problems with thinking didn't start until late in life. Now, it is possible that somebody with an intellectual disability also develops dementia later in life. In fact, if you have an intellectual disability, such as Down syndrome, like you mentioned, that person's risk of getting dementia is higher. However, the way you tease those two apart is that the cognitive problems, the thinking problems that are happening later in life are gonna start getting to be to a greater degree than the problems they had their entire life. And you tease a lot of this apart through cognitive testing, basically paper and pencil testing. Lorraine wrote and she said that she has started to notice that her loved one seems to be having a hard time hearing her when she speaks. Even though her loved one does have some hearing problems, she feels like there is something more happening because even when she talks very clearly and slowly, it's as if her loved one can't hear her or understand her at all. Lorraine, this is a really good observation. In dementia, the brain's ability to process words and sentences starts to decline. So even if their hearing was perfect, 
chances are your loved one with dementia at some point is gonna have a really hard time understanding you, and that oftentimes can be misinterpreted as just hearing problems. So sometimes people will just say the same thing over but louder, and their loved one with dementia isn't really getting it still. So that's why it's very important to use short sentences, simple sentences, and to not try to give too many things at once. This is also why it's really important to be mindful of your nonverbal behaviors. Somebody with dementia might be picking up on every other word or every third word that you're saying because their brain is so slowed down to the point that they can't pick up on all those words together. So they're picking up only on bits and pieces of what you're saying, but they're really focusing on how your face looks. So if whatever you're saying, they're trying to piece it together with how you look and they're going to respond more to your nonverbals than your actual words. So yeah, your loved one does likely have hearing problems. Like you mentioned, many older adults do have hearing problems. However, the processing of information also tends to go downhill. That's why you want to be mindful of your nonverbal behaviors, use short, simple statements as much as possible. Instead of asking open-ended questions, sometimes you might wanna give them multiple choice questions between two options to make it easier for them. And you might want to even consider using gestures and pictures to help with communication. So Hadra wrote in and she asked, should she be entertaining her loved one's requests to join their delusions? For example, her loved one thinks that pictures of people are real and sometimes will ask her to feed them. This is such a good question. So Hadra here is concerned that joining her loved one's delusion might make things worse or might encourage her loved one's delusions to continue. Now, of course, what works for one person with dementia doesn't work for every person with dementia. However, the majority of careblazers find that joining in on your loved one's delusion is sometimes the best and easiest thing to do to help your loved one move on. So as long as the delusion is not harmful, many careblazers just choose to do the thing that their loved one is asking. In this case, it would be feeding the picture that your loved one thinks that the people are real in the picture and just going ahead and feeding the people in the picture. Now, if you have a loved one who you can just tell them that's a picture, those people aren't real, and your loved one is pretty flexible and easygoing and they'll say, oh, okay, and move on, by all means, go for it and just tell them the truth. However, if you are like the majority of careblazers out there, this isn't often the case. The more you tell them that what they believe isn't true and what they are seeing and thinking isn't true, the more argumentative your loved one becomes. So, so long as the delusion is not physically dangerous or risking their safety or anybody else's safety, many careblazers say, hey, let's just join in on the delusion and help this move on. Careblazers, I hope that the second edition of Rapid Fire has been helpful to you. Please leave your comments or questions below any of my videos or over on my Dementia Careblazers community closed Facebook group, a supportive and friendly and private place for you to be able to share your questions and concerns with people in similar situations like you. Although I can't respond to every single question I'm receiving, I promise I am going through and I'm reading them all. So you have a chance of me picking your question to read on next month's edition of the Rapid Fire Edition. All right, Careblazers, don't forget to download that updated second edition Careblazer Survival Guide linked below in the description. And until next week, bye. and you think that there are pic oh. dementia is when 